tea for two. Today is actually tea for three, as I have two guests on. Um, we have Michael Beddows, um, he's a producer, director and writer, originally from the West Midlands, but he's now living in London. Um, over the last decade, he's worked across a range of feature, short television and commercial projects. And we have Amy Clark, who's a script writer, also based in London, but raised in West Cork in Ireland. And after she completed her master's degree in 2018, she wrote a short film, Sequence, which has actually won three awards for best short film on the film festival circuit. And she's currently working on a number of TV comedy series projects. Her latest work as a scriptwriter has been for YouTube comedy web series, Angry Quiz Guy, starring Nick Helm. Okay, everyone, please hold your papers up. Up, 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 up. Let's see them, let's see them all. There we go. <laughs> Very good, very good. And geez, right. Well, I wouldn't have to do this, but I, if I could trust any one of you. Huh? But yes, 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 am it? You cheating little f. Yeah, you look like a f when you held your paper up and you changed your answers, right? Hi, Amy. Hi, Michael. Hello. Thanks so much for joining me. How are you both? Yeah, really good. Thanks for inviting us. Uh, exciting. <laughs> really good. So tell me, whereabouts are you guys? Uh, we are in Greenwich in London. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> I'm in the bedroom, Mike's in the living room. <laughs> and that's about it for the because of the size of the flat. There's a, then a bathroom and a tiny hallway. So, you know, the options were limited. <laughs> oh, blimey. So how, how are you finding isolation and lockdown? Is that quite tough in a small space? Or? Actually, it's got a lot better than we expected. So I guess, you know, having got engaged almost two years ago, it's a good sign that we... <laughs> dealt quite well with this. Um, we're quite lucky though because where we live we're on the eighth floor of um, these apartments and they've got ceiling to floor windows and it looks out over the Thames so it kind of gives you an idea that you've got more space than you actually have. Oh that's um, nice, you don't feel like you're in a box anyway. Exactly, yeah. yeah my desk is kind of up against the window and I can look out of the water while I work so that's helpful. <laughs> oh lovely. So um, Michael tell me what you've been up to before lockdown, were you working on a project that got cancelled or? Well, I left, uh, I was employed by a production company as their executive creative producer, looking after developing TV shows, but also looking after um, their branded commercial stuff. Okay. Uh, I left there at the end of February, so that was terrible timing. <laughs> yeah. uh, started doing it on my own, um, and I'd lined up two larger pieces of sort of commercial work. Uh, we were in development on those, waiting for a green light, and then when the lockdown hit, both have postponed indefinitely so they may come back they might not um, and in lockdown because we can't shoot or develop or really do anything um, I've thrown myself into re-establishing my own production company oh, right. and developing my own tv and film projects so there's probably eight nine different projects on the go at the moment wow um, yeah and some and it's been it's been really good because being in lockdown means you've got nothing else to focus on and what we've what I've ended up doing is getting them out to places like UK TV. Uh, we've got a couple of projects in discussion there, a couple of other projects at other places. So now we're in a position where hopefully the serious conversations can start once we're back up and shooting. And then yesterday we did a, and Amy was a writer on it, a web-based sort of mini sitcom using Zoom. Oh, fantastic. What was it, what's it about? It's called Angry Quiz Guy. And it's about a guy who hosts a Zoom pub quiz every week, but he has a very, very short fuse. <laughs> that sounds probably, I'd say there's probably quite a few like that out there. <laughs> um, so, so the creative process is well and truly carried on for you. Yeah, um, and that was, that was a, an idea that was brought to us by a, a director called Ben Highland. And we've actually ended up doing like a remote American style writer's room on it. So we'd all have like little chats about where the show's going, what we felt each character's sort of traits were, things that are going to carry across the whole series. And then we helped each other and edited each other's scripts, but broke off to write. So there's seven episodes in the series. Amy wrote two of them, uh, Peach and Pain. Um, I wrote ones called Dispute and Mum. And Ben wrote another two, The Clap and... <laughs> yeah not as bad as it sounds uh i can't remember the second one that ben wrote Ooh. um and then we also myself and ben co-wrote the finale love touching cloth touching cloth 
Ben wrote Touching okay. Cloth as well. So yeah. Is that going to be released on online or yeah? Yeah. All episodes are going out on midday on Friday, so that's Friday the 29th. Uh, oh, okay. On their own YouTube channel. So yeah. Angry oh. Quiz Guy on YouTube. So Amy, how, how have you find, found writing in isolation? Is it easy? I suppose it's how you write anyway, is it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's different because I had started doing some freelance copywriting work. And when we went into lockdown, I thought that it was going to drop off, but actually it started to get a lot busier. So from that point of view, it's been really busy and... I've I've almost been working Monday to Friday full time, sometimes weekends, just to kind of keep up with the demand. But it does mean it's had a bit of a knock-on effect in terms of script writing because I thought, oh, it's isolation, I'll get loads done, and not really happened on that side of things. But we have done Angry Quiz Guy, which I think was good actually because they're such short scripts. Whereas when you're facing a TV series or a feature film, you suddenly get quite overwhelmed at where to even begin and I think creatively it can be hard to motivate yourself when you've got the same surroundings every day and you can't go out and get much of a break from the same surroundings now we are lucky in Greenwich because we have the park and Blackheath and everything to for a big daily walks um, but I know a lot of writers have had trouble finding their creative flow at this time so I think actually having a short project to work on was really good because you think, well, I only have to write a couple of pages. I don't have to write 40 odd or 120 or anything like that. So where we've, I have been working on some of the narrative stuff in the background in terms of planning it, um, the scripting, not so much, which is why actually having something like Angry Quiz Guy has been a good outlet for that side of creativity. And actually in the last week I sort of went, oh, well that went okay actually. And we filmed it yesterday and it was funny. So yeah, now I feel a bit more inspired to go back to the other projects that I've sort of been ignoring. <laughs> yeah. I think it's actually interesting to hear that, you know, you had that kind of creative block as well. Cause I know certainly um, all the musicians I've spoken to have really struggled with that. Um, yeah. you know, that, that sort of not being able to perform in a way that we're used to. Um, yeah. And I suppose for you guys, you know, there's actually quite quite a lot that you can do from home. Uh, and Michael, tell me, um, like, uh, for your colleagues, sort of in the TV film industry, uh, how are people finding it? You know, it must be quite tough. Not uh, You've got the same uncertainty that we have in the music business. I think it's been rough for crews, especially. So your day-to-day -day workers are on a daily rate. Um, it's been really tough for them because, yeah, they're bread and butter if they work on documentaries or narrative is to you know book a job whether it runs for a day or whether it runs for six months and beyond that and have income and if no one's shooting no one's earning and it's it's great us saying oh we managed to do a funny little sitcom on zoom but the people who aren't involved in that part of the process are sound people camera operators grips gaffers all of those sort of skilled people makeup artists so it's tough for them. And actually a lot of them, I'm seeing friends on Facebook, they've fallen through the cracks of like the sort of government support schemes. So they've got no work. They don't know when work's returning. And if it does return, whether they're going to be included in that. So, you know, I mean, obviously my husband's a theatre lighting technician. So I, I see that from the theatre side as well, you know, and it was one impetus really to start this series is to try and bring awareness to the fact that when we talk about the art sector, it's a huge, huge business. It's not just music or theatre or, you know, and it's all the people that work backstage. And, and I think people forget quite easily those crew members and stuff that make everything happen. But even when um, it returns as a producer, it's my job to look through these new social guide, you know, social distancing guidelines and safe filming guidelines. And it's like looking at Australia that's already up and filming in some ways and other places like Sweden and Denmark. They all have, you know, no crew member two metres apart, which means you've got to have smaller teams, which means you're hiring less people, uh, has to do their own makeup. So that means the whole makeup department, are, even when filming returns, they're still out of work. Yeah. It's just tough. You, you were dead good. Mm. High praise indeed. Uh, I want to do what you do. I want to be a drag queen. Oh, I can think of that. Personal interest, then. Would you help me? Me? Be a fairy drag mother? Oh, it's not about the time. It's just what you did up there. It was dead good. <laughs> Hi, 
I talk about your wonderful film sequence? Yeah. That we really enjoyed. <laughs> um, when when did you make that now? Ooh, September 2018, which, yeah, I can't believe that much time has gone by because I felt we spent forever in the pre-production phase trying to get the money to make it and trying to get people to invest in it and, under and appreciate it and want to be a part of it. But it felt for a long time like it was never going to happen. And then since the day we shot, you know, the days we shot it, it's just been on fast forward. <laughs> you know, it's now been edited, it's been out there for a year, it's done its festival run and is now available to view online. And that all just went by in a whirlwind, you know? And, and where, where did the idea come from? Um, it's one that I'd had for a while brewing because back when I was 17, I went to, I was living in Cork and I went to the fucking Crane Dance College there and I ended up living with some guys who were doing drag and I was sort of 17 going on 18 at the time and it was just the most fun I'd ever had. Um, but also it was Cork in the year 2000, which, you know, these guys couldn't go out and walk down the street and drag on their way to work or anything. It all had to be very, you know, you go to your venue, you get changed, you do your performance, you take everything off, take all your makeup off before you walk home because that's just the way it was. And I think growing up as well in West Cork and countryside, uh, going to, you know, Catholic schools, it gave me this sense of thinking, well, what is it like to be, LGBTQ plus and also want to do express yourself through something like drag and you live in a space and time where it's not accepted and I mean obviously there's still issues in other countries and even within our own I was looking at a time when it was even really hard just to be open about yourself to your closest friends and your family and that's why I kind of picked the late nineties for it and I decided to set it in Blackpool because that's where I was born and, and I wanted to explore through a character that lived in a small town like that in the late nineties who just wants to express themselves through drag but can't find a way how. There was no social media. Find a mentor to find your own people. You had to actually go out and seek it out. Mm. So the, the main character, Paul, goes to Blackpool. He takes you know big deep breath goes into a drag club and sees his first live drag show and it's just this transformative experience for him and he meets um a sort of jaded old queen who can't be bothered with it anymore and begs for help and it's kind of how their relationship you know um Mimi Le Peur, the drag queen kind of finds a new love for drag through helping this young person to realize his own dreams and yeah so the inspiration just came from my own experiences knowing drag queens when I was younger and kind of being involved in it on and off over the years. It was really enjoyable well done and um, yeah, Michael yeah. What, what was it like um, um, being the director on uh, the time of your girlfriend's um, script was that tough is she is she a tough, tough script writer to work with? Or? No she wasn't um, <laughs> like we did a lot of the talking in pre-production about what characters were feeling what you what you thought when you wrote it, wrote this part and so that's I found she was perfect as a writer because she filtered her thoughts and feelings into me during pre-production and then was really in the background on set which leaves um leaves the conversation sort of not in an arrogant way but it leaves it one way which is sort of how it should be mm. on sets you get sort of there's creative either clashes or creative like splits of vision when and I've never encountered it myself, but I've had director friends who've been on set and the writer's there and they've stood on their shoulder on the monitor, keep whispering ideas. And what it does is you end up with a really unsatisfying, sometimes an unsatisfying result because there was a clear vision. But while that was happening, there was sort of other things pulling and splitting and decision making. So, so it was great and, and actually was there and, and present. So what it means is once we would wrapped on a scene, if I had a question, or something popped into my head or we had to change something maybe because of location logistics or time i could go and find amy and have a quick conversation so yeah it's great so so when so, you're producing something then is, is it kind of a creative risk to start with if you're if you if you've fallen in love with an idea and you want to get that made hmm. presumably then you don't get paid until it becomes an actual yeah. sort of physical thing is it 
yeah it's it's like gambling but instead of, you know you're staking your time and your money on something but then you've got unlike gambling you've got your own instincts and wits of what's a good idea and what's a bad idea and actually actually bad ideas wrong like there are so many great scripts i've read but i can't place them as a script writer like how do you go about actually getting someone to buy your script how, how does that work that process um, I mean, a lot of script writers who start out uh, usually have to submit their scripts to funding schemes or competitions and things like that. There's a few of them around in this country. There's quite a lot in America and a lot of them do accept um, international scripts. And there's even one of them have Coverfly. They have like a point system. So the more you submit your script and edits of it to different competitions, the more points it gets and it starts ranking higher. So, and then sometimes producers can find it that way. If you're trying to get your script away to channels, that can be a lot more difficult. I mean, the BBC Writers Room do have um, a drama script room and a comedy script room that opens once a year for submissions. So you can put in for that but obviously because there's so few in this country it's everyone puts in for them and there's thousands and thousands of scripts to go through so it, it can be hard to break through uh, the bfi do one as well um for feature films and for short films but it's you know it's a tough game if you're just a script writer and you're not a director as well because a lot of people are writer directors and then they write a short film they get the funding and they put something together themselves um so it's quite handy because I am not a producer in the slightest, that would be my idea of a nightmare. And I've never really had much inclination to do any directing. So to have someone like Mike who can do that side of it has been great for me because <laughs> <Very happy. laughs> if I was just a writer out in the world on my own, it's a scary place um, and it's hard to know where to start. I think a lot of people try and attach themselves to little teens when they come out of university, if that's the route they come or they go networking to events and they try and meet a director they try and meet a producer and form yeah a team that can go forward together and try and make something and a lot of it has to be persistence basically because um it's if you just wait around hoping someone from the bbc is going to read your script at the right time you'll probably be waiting a very long time so yeah, yeah. It is persistent. <laughs> and are you actually are you working on any any scripts at the moment uh, we are actually, we um, have been working on something, it's called 28 Dates Later, and it's actually based on a blog um, by this guy called Willard Foxton, who's a journalist. And back in 2013, he wrote um, a dating blog. And it was inspired because he'd gone on a date and uh, she'd been playing with his hands and then bit really hard into his finger to the point it got infected. And he ranted about it on Facebook and everyone went, this is hilarious, you should write a blog. So he decided he would. And his rules were that every date had to come from different dating websites. And it was, it took off at the time, it was really popular. So um, a producer friend of ours got the rights and we've written a pilot for that. And we've been shopping that around a bit. There's, there's interest but it's always there's a big difference between interest and actually going into production and then of course with what's been going on at the moment globally everyone's quite reluctant to take on new projects when you don't know when you're going to be able to shoot them well listen it's, it's been amazing talking to you both thanks so much for your time and mm -hmm. and it was I'm, I'm delighted about is is hearing actually how creatively busy you both are you know um that's really refreshing to hear in these times you know well we can only hope that it serves as well when all this uh is over or yeah. somewhat over or uh, exactly <laughs> and, and uh, look I, I wish you both all the best with thank you very much. all your future projects <laughs> you've got a lot going on <laughs> but thank you so much and cheers i shall see you again at another time thank yes. you very much guys <laughs> take care bye, bye.